Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Octay. Hello. Hi, Christian. Uh, nice for having me here. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you here. And uh, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Oh, my name is Octay Sadi. Um, uh, I live in the Netherlands, Holland. Um, married, uh, two children, and I work as a technical consultant for a company over here in Holland where we help. Um, customers from actually all over the world uh, migrate to uh, Office 365 or Microsoft 365 services, Azure. Uh, and my main focus is um, uh, enterprise mobility and security. So uh, I like to do um, everything that's uh, connected uh, with uh, endpoint manager, security related topics, uh, Windows 10, Android, iOS, I'll touch them all. That's great. And, and clearly you worship at the altar of Clippy. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that's, that's uh, nostalgia, right? It, oh yeah. Uh, Clippy was, uh, I believe it was word Clippy, right? And it would pop up on your that's screen. Right. And then, that's right. That's uh, right. Say, Hey there, I'm just popping up for no reason. <laughs> this yeah, is I one of those. I see that you're creating a form. Have you thought about this or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was great actually. Sad to, to see it leave then. Yeah. Well, we just replaced it by the nameless, the the personality less uh, uh, of the uh, of like the power app, the, like the pop ups, you know, like drop, <laughs> drop down tools. Well, who knows? Uh, I'd love to see uh, a clip come back again. Yeah. Well, I just thinking about that too. Is like I just saw that uh, uh, Scott Hanselman was wearing at an event uh, this this week a a Clippy T shirt. I'm like, I've got a Clippy T shirt. I need to go. Break that up. Whenever I would wear okay. that, I used that was one of those t-shirts. I don't know if you when like you when you travel, like going to events and stuff. I would wear different creative t-shirts. The clippy one, I think I got the most people coming up to me on my yeah. flight or at the airport or wherever, like, hey, I love that. And hey, do you are you able to I, I had this issue? Can you help with this? <laughs> Great. I don't right? know if that's a good or bad thing. <laughs> well, I think it's a good thing. I also like to wear wear, wear crazy t-shirts on events uh, do try to um, uh, to have some sort of relationship with the event so on the microsoft events i'll try to wear a t-shirt with with something from microsoft old school or something but I'd like to do that yeah yeah i was wearing yesterday the uh the last in-person ignite event was that uh, with the cassette tape was the kind of the uh you know gardens of the galaxy type you know play oh, on the t-shirt it's a great that, t-shirt yeah that was a great t-shirt i don't think my my kids will actually know what a cassette is but uh, that's nostalgia as well right yeah. well i just i i just saw that so i have a friend that owns a music store uh, a couple cities down uh, so he was a friend of mine in college and so he he like me i'm a vinyl collector and a bunch of things and he, I saw he's doing a little pop-up like selling cassettes and I'm like, oh, that would be great. And then I realized I don't own a cassette player anymore. Who I does? have a lot, but I don't have a cassette player. Yeah. Yeah. Who does actually these days? I yeah. might have one lying around somewhere on the ceiling maybe, but. That's why I need to I go know. find one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, you could find them for like 20 bucks that plug in USB and, and play cassettes right into your computer and you can digitize all your cassettes. Like it's not expensive. I just need to do it. Like Same for the VHS uh, cassettes, right? You, you could digitize the videos you had previously yep. laying around in your home. Well, so so what was your path to becoming an MVP? So I, I know you've been involved in the community for a while, but kind of what was you know, what was your, your path? Um, well, where should I start? Actually, I think it, it started um, way back when I started working in IT, somewhere in 97, actually. But that was not the actual path to becoming a Microsoft MVP, but it was what led me to um, grow the passion for sharing knowledge, uh, right? Because uh, back in, in those days, I started out working as a... a Visual Basic programmer, actually, mm. but I kind of switched uh, over to infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
uh, jumped over to uh, teaching small groups of people how to use computers in general, like Windows 95 and um, later on Windows NT4. Mm -hmm. um, it, those were small classrooms where, where you could talk to, to people and just teach them how to work with computers. And I kind of like that um, sharing knowledge. And um, years later, I started a blog uh, also from, from that same passion because I wanted to share the, the things I've uh, done in the field uh, because we as professionals see a lot of companies most of the time and, and you do run into stuff um, and you do talk to people who run into the same things as you did. Um, so I thought, well, uh, I hope my blog will help uh, mm -hmm. others um, when they do run into those kind of issues. And um, I started blogging. Yeah, I'm not sure when I started blogging, but it was it was a while back. And I kind of like that people commented on the blogs as well. Um, uh, that gave me some sort of um, indication of uh, what I was writing, if it, if it was good or not. Mm -hmm. And then uh, back in 19, yeah, 2019 it was, I'm not sure who nominated me, but uh, I got an email. I received an email from Microsoft that I was uh, nominated for Windows Insider MVP. Uh, I did do um, a lot uh, with Windows Insider mm -hmm. back then. And I did uh, provide feedback, et cetera. But I never expected to be nominated with the Windows Insider MVP nomination. Uh, because my main focus was uh, enterprise mobility in tune. And yeah, sure, I did a lot with Windows 10, but um, so that was quite a surprise. And it was even a bigger surprise when they actually awarded me with the uh, Windows Insider MVP nomination. Felt, felt, felt very good, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of the humble guy, but yeah, it's a feeling you, you can't really explain. And I've been a Windows Insider MVP for two years. Um, and then the third year, 2021, I didn't uh, got rewarded again. So I've set myself a goal then again to uh, hope and maybe become Enterprise Mobility MVP somewhere in 2022. And that was September 1st. So congratulations. Did, yeah. Just, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah. It is great. It is very good to be um, part of, of such a close community of, of like-minded people. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I think it's all about sharing knowledge with, with others and helping uh, others out. Um, and I believe you once said that uh, we MVPs are very approachable people, right? But I like to think that for the most part, it's not going to be. A, it's, it's like ninety nine out of a hundred. <laughs> ninety nine out of a hundred. Okay, so I like. I hope I'm approachable for for others as well. Um, um, and yeah, it's the thing I like to do most: uh, helping yeah. out other people. Yeah, I, I'd say, and just on that note too, I said, yeah, I know a couple of cranky MVPs, brilliant people. Um, they're not as approachable. <laughs> they're. There, but uh, but still, I mean, they help but plenty of people. They are. They, they, they yeah. became. They are in, in in different ways. But like people on the streets, like you know, hey, you're an MVP. Can you help me with this? Like they they hate that. They abhor that the scenario. Yeah. But, Just lock me up yeah, in a room yeah. and let me do my job, and I'll help you out from from That's, within the know, room. Right? And if there are people that are interested in becoming MVPs, I mean, they, I know some MVPs that are hardcore introverts like they don't do events they don't speak you know they they do things behind the scenes they're in forums they they don't want to build a profile that's out there and doing the other things and so there it, it takes all kinds of, of people and backgrounds but you know at the core it is that being an mvp means that we're we're open to helping people in some way um, yeah so. true true i do believe that and some of those people I think they, they do a great job maybe with um, uh, the, the, the program um, groups as well mm -hmm. um, because you get a lot of uh, uh, 
invites from, from Microsoft to join the, the product group meetings uh, where you can leave your feedback and uh, think with the Microsoft guys about some of the, the features they're uh, maybe uh, trying to implement in, in uh, all of the solutions we use every day. So yeah, I guess it's, it's true. You don't have to be uh, in the front lines to be an MVP. Um, you just need to share a bit of knowledge and give your feedback about the products you use every day. Yeah, and be yourself. And be yeah. yourself, find, yeah. Find something that is natural, that's organic. True. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I know, so you've been in around the program for a few years, even though this is, this is new, but you've, you are you're been aware of it for a while. Um, I, I'm sure you have people that have come up to you and like, well, you know, what, what can I do? Like they know you and, and, you know, how could I get involved? How would I do this? Like, what is your advice to people about how to approach that? Like becoming an MVP. Um, well, I think the best thing you can do, and you actually said it, is uh, be yourself and do what you like most. Because even if I wasn't awarded the MVP nomination, I would still write my blogs and I would yeah. still uh, create my videos and I would still go uh, on the, the tech for us and help other people's out. Um, it's about, yeah, it does take a lot of time and you have to find a balance between work and family and and doing the things you love as well because sometimes i work um, in the weekends creating a video explaining people how to enroll an android device in endpoint manager uh, but like i said i would still do that even if i wasn't awarded the mvp nomination yeah um, that's just the the cherry on top you say i believe yeah um, getting getting the award yeah well, it's like yeah. I was I was up till one a.m. last night editing video, so that it's just yeah, it's it's my you know somebody like other people have hobbies outside you know we're we're empty nesters. My wife uh, full time school and work and finishing her degree and uh, and so I'm I'm here and it's my hobby to go and do that. I enjoy writing and creating the video and interviewing people, talking to people. So that's it. Um, that's my pastime. So yeah, and like you that's said, your passion as well. I would do it regardless of the award. It's just it's part true. of me. True, true. Yeah. And I guess if you stick with that, it will come um, naturally, and someone will notice you, and um, someone might nominate you uh, just by themselves, or uh, you'll get to know other MVPs. Um, and, and when you feel you're ready to be nominated, you might ask them to nominate you or someone else from, from Microsoft community. I would never ask someone to nominate me if I didn't feel like uh, my contributions um, weren't enough uh, to be nominated. Yeah. It's not nothing. Um, it's, a, it's a big thing to be, to be nominated MVP. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's good to keep the high standards as well. And like uh, when I wasn't nominated in 2021, I knew why I wasn't nominated. My contributions dropped like, uh, yeah, they dropped big time. So mm -hmm. I didn't do nothing almost for a year on social media or the tech community and my blog kind of uh, went down as well. So it's a normal thing to not being rewarded with the MVP award then again, if you ask me. But that's okay. It's not a bad thing. It's um, it's a good thing actually, and it it motivates you to do better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's a and it's and it is a bit of a. I always say this. It's a bit of a black box uh, of two of the types of contributions. So it's not like I can look at you and compare like what I'm doing to the volume of things that you're creating, and like there, there's none of that. I mean, Microsoft may go in and look at and say. Um, I'm I mean, not like there's a, a fixed number for MVPs in any areas. They don't look at and say, oh, if I'm going to add somebody new, that means I have to drop somebody that's in the program. It's not like that. Oh God, I hope but, not. No, no, but no, I've been told that that's not the case. <laughs> How, however, they do look at and they say, well, I mean, overall, I mean, obviously with the, the pandemic and, and that impacted, you know, everybody had to kind of shift and look at doing 
online digital versions of things that they were doing and other activities and things. Um, but, you know, Microsoft does look at that and say, you know, what is kind of the balance? And there are some people that are doing considerably fewer things, but the quality of the importance of the things that they are doing could be very high. So, I mean, it's, Honestly, I, I appreciate when the MVP leads have to go in their end of year and go and review all of the contributions, like bless them for taking on that work. Yeah, <laughs> I would not want to do that. It, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's months of activities that they're, they're doing that. Um, but it's a, but again, it kind of goes back to, uh, I don't think there's any shortage of, of ways of ideas for how you can help. Uh, other people and just get involved. I, I have uh, two friends that both are now MVPs, but for a couple of years tried and but were submitted multiple times and, and they were doing just a ton of stuff, speaking and organizing and user groups and content and just, just tons of things around there. And we're frustrated that they weren't able to like, why, why am I not breaking through? Why I'm not getting in? And two people said basically the same thing to me. Uh, and, and I had nominated one and kind of added my name to the second one, but both kind of came to the same way and said, you know what, I'm not focusing on that anymore as it doesn't matter if I get it, I get it. I says, you know, there's, there's been so many benefits to just working this way and being collaborative and giving back to the community. And sure. one of them just said, look, my business is booming. I'm turning away customers because, you know, I, I have more than enough to do. It'd be great to have an MVP award, but uh, you know, I'm not even thinking about it. It's, it's, uh, it's off my radar now. And like a month later, you got, got awarded. awarded. Yeah. So, and, yeah, so that's, that, that's maybe good it's to a key. It's, maybe it's the humility part of that. It's just like, you know, like yeah. once, once you kind of break of that, like so focused on becoming an MVP. Like uh, yeah. could be, could be true. Um, uh, there's there's a point to what you're saying because I don't think becoming an MVP should be the main focus or or your main goal. Um, like I said, it is the cherry on top of your all the work and and contributions and and community work you did, uh, and it's great being nominated. Don't get me wrong, um, but um, it's not my first priority to be nominated in MVP. Yeah. Uh, yes, you do get some perks, but it's not about the perks as well. Um, it does have some benefits like like the community itself, the, the MVP community itself, all the great people who are working oh, yeah. uh, with Microsoft where you can get in touch more easily maybe. Yeah, the uh, access is huge. Yeah. That, so whether individually, and, like personally building out like your skills, your network, but also your company. I mean, there's direct benefits to employing MVPs because of the connections that they have as well. True, true. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I like most, I think. I do have to find my way around uh, the, the, the product group meetings and uh, getting to know the, the right people, uh, having your feedback land with, with the correct people as well. Uh, but uh, that's kind of... Um, uh, in progress right now. So I hope I can be of some added value for still for the community, for the people, as well as for Microsoft products and, and see from there. Well, one thing is I always, my word of advice, and I know, again, you're familiar with the, the, the program and everything, but it's just to uh, be careful with how much you try to go to, because it, there are so many you know, NDI calls, so many product team calls and previews True. of things and different programs and things, True. you know, Microsoft will, well, like any employer, you know, they'll, they'll take as much time as you'll give. Uh, and True. so it could be a full-time job, just trying to keep up with everything yeah. that they offer that's out there. I think it's impossible to, to go to all those meetings. Yeah. It's, it's, you have it's to be selective, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to be selective and you have to pick the ones you want to uh, contribute to, and I think it's a good thing to have a look at the the, the product group meetings that uh, really spark your interest, yeah. right? Because I uh, tend to get involved with the product group meetings that are security related, endpoint manager related, uh, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes identity because I do touch conditional access, etc. 
But to be honest, although I love the, the Power Apps and SharePoint and Teams and everything that's, that's living in Microsoft 365, I don't think I'm going to be of add value for those products because there's still a lot of things one to learn. Um, and I think there's a lot of other people who are much better in doing that than I can actually do. So yeah, true. You have to be picky. Yeah. I don't think you, yeah, it is a day job. Actually, it, if it's, you want it, to right. go it, for that, it could be a day job. Today, I received seven different meeting invites for di different topics. I said yes to one. I said maybe to two and, and no to the rest. Yeah. And, and so that's, yeah. and it's almost every day, it seems like, that I get you know, a couple of those things. And then I was part of another uh, invited to get a preview of something new that's coming out. And there were just three of us, four of us on that call today. So it was very okay. limited group. So there's a lot of that. I mean, that's the kind of the access that you yeah. get to take a look at. And Microsoft gives insights into NDA only discussions and they want feedback. And so there's a lot that you can go and do, but yeah, I I'm, I'm having to say no to more and more because it's interfering with the day job. Uh, yeah, I do believe know. that. So it's, it's gotta be careful. Not, yeah. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. And even though uh, most of the calls are NDA, uh, you do you still learn a lot of what's coming, and you might uh, anticipate on it uh, and and see from there. But but yeah, it's good to be part of such a great community. Really, it yeah. is. Well, definitely. Yeah. Well, Octa, I really appreciate your time today, and it's just this brief discussion, getting to know you, and hope to see you at, at, uh, at maybe the MVP summit next year. If we, I don't know what's happening there, but hope so Chris. one of these hope events so. soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, folks it's... that want to find out more about you, what's the best way to get in touch with you to find you? Well, uh, you can have a look at my LinkedIn profile. Of course, I'm also um, uh, reachable on Twitter uh, and I uh, do have my blog. Uh, it's called all things cloud blog. Uh, and you can look up YouTube as well. Excellent. And I'll have, of course, all the links. It'll be in the YouTube uh, as well as the blog post. So, Octave, really appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me, Christian. It was my pleasure. <laughs>